Hello, and welcome to our first overview presentation for the WIPC4. My name is Dr. Adam Scheller. I'm a senior educational consultant with Pearson Clinical Assessment. Today, we'll be focusing on the revision goals of the WIPC4. Please look for future announcements regarding additional aspects of this new revision, including sessions on the WIPC4 child-friendly features, working memory, and inhibition. I have listed here the standard revision goals for the WIPC4, and as you'll see, this is also how the manual is organized. These goals will take into account all critical reviews and customer feedback that we receive, as well as the initial market research. Now, our goals for revision include updating the theory from any uh, research that has come out since the WIPC3. Additionally, we set out to improve the developmental appropriateness of this measure, and that's important given our understanding of inconsistencies across development for this particular age group. As well, we set out to enhance the clinical utility, increase the user friendliness, and improve psychometric properties. The current revisions of the WIPC improve its use in the measurement of ability by focusing on developmentally sensitive and comprehensive cognitive analysis for young children. Now, through this process of revision, we needed to stop and look at the previous versions of the WIPC from a more developmentally sensitive lens. And in doing so, this process led to an increase in the breadth of construct coverage. Now, working memory is an important component to the understanding of a young child's potential. So the addition of this construct to the WIPC-4 allows us to improve the appropriateness of our profile formulations, and thus the recommendations we're able to generate. Working memory has been a focused addition for this version of the WIPC. In this revision, we're better able to measure constructs at a level that match the child, rather than through measuring constructs developed for adults. For working memory, this was accomplished by developing new and more developmentally appropriate subtests for measuring working memory in young kids. Also, as I have listed here, the addition of working memory lends to a working memory index score. Now, in terms of revising the composite terminology, factor analysis lends more to interpreting index scores, which is more in line with the current WACE and WISC. No longer will there be a PIQ and VIQ. Also, recent research on the WISC-4 and WACE-4 has been successful with splitting the perceptual reasoning index into two separate indices, one that's more like the traditional perceptual organization index with block design and object assembly, and the other, as you see I've listed here, being more of a fluid reasoning index. This is currently being evaluated for the WIPC-4, and this means we're looking at our data and whether or not we can create separate perceptual organization and fluid factors from the performance subtests. Also, as you see I've listed here, the general ability index is currently being evaluated for this age group. And that's in order to provide a summary measure that's less sensitive to the influences of working memory and processing speed. So why are we adding working memory to the WIPC-4? Well, first, the addition of working memory was the most highly rated request for this revision. Because compared to older kids and adults, there's a relative lack of working memory measures with strong floors for the preschool-aged children. Working memory is, is important because research is showing us how uh, how predictive of school success working memory can be. There are a lot of studies that show uh, how working memory performance can predict a person's language comprehension, reading and math achievement, attention and attentional control, fluid intelligence, and so forth. As such, these relationships of working memory and other abilities really highlights the reciprocal nature of cognition. Working memory is also important because it's sensitive to clinical conditions in young children, the same as it is in older children and adults. Um, some examples are its sensitivity to ADHD, TBI, etc. With regard to this last point in the developmental trajectory of working memory, it's important to measure working memory in young kids because some of the more recent research really leans toward different developmental trajectories for working memory. And this leads us to think that working memory in a teenager or adult may not be the same as it is in a young child. As such, the use of complex tasks with preschoolers may be inconsistent with developmental trajectory of working memory abilities. Now, from experience we gained in market research that was collected, one of the difficulties noted from the WIPC-3 is in what age range should we put the four-year-olds? Because as we know, four-year-olds can vary greatly given whether or not they're exposed to preschool, as well as different levels of enrichment in the home. Now, once school starts at around age five, skills do tend to equalize for kids, but this isn't the case with four-year-olds because of the varying levels of enrichment. Now, out-of-level testing is possible with the new IPC-4, and this refers to the concept that if you have a four- or five-year-old who's referred and you think that they are lower functioning, you can give them the lower age battery and still get a valid score. 
Additional feedback from the WIPC-3 was to look at the processing speed subtests. On the WIPC-3, about 10% of children could not complete the processing speed subtests because of fine motor weaknesses. And fine motor weaknesses, as we know, will significantly affect the ability for a child to use a pencil. So in order to reduce those fine motor demands, a bingo dauber is now used instead of a pencil. As such, the symbol search and coding subtests have been changed to accommodate this dauber. Additionally, more developmentally appropriate language is being used for instructions by simplifying and reducing vocab level and eliminating unnecessary wordiness. Finally, the art was updated to be more contemporary. And for security reasons, about 20% of the content was updated. Now, in an effort to enhance the clinical utility of the WIPC-4, several updates were made, including, as you can see uh, by the first bullet here, extending the age range by three months up to seven years and six months of age. Also, alignment with other measures was updated, and that includes adding several studies uh, using the select NEPC-2 subtests. The NEPC-2 was a non-clinical sample, but data is also currently being collected for clinical samples. And the NEPSI-2 is important because we feel that comparison of the WIPC-4 to the NEPSI-2 findings may help us further understand how these cognitive abilities are interrelated. With regard to the special group studies, several updates were made based on market feedback, and I'll just give you a few examples. Market research did indicate that understanding preliteracy was a major concern so that we can better identify children earlier than we do now. Also, the emotional disturbance group was requested and added. The concurrent validity studies reflect how clinicians use the WIPC uh, when evaluating children with disabilities, and I'll give you an example. Um, the intellectually disabled group will also collect Vineland 2 data. With regard to this last bullet here, um, the motor impairment group's information isn't actively being collected for this update because customers indicated um, that the motor impairment impact on the WIPC was intuitive, um, as the impact is expected on any subtest with the motor demand. This was the lowest ranked clinical group from market research. Also, it did allow us to add new clinical groups that clinicians wanted more, such as the preliteracy and emotional disturbance groups. In terms of increasing the user friendliness of the WIPC-4, a common request coming from clinicians was for us to reduce the test administration time while increasing the amount of content, and that's that more for less request. With the WIPC-4, we were able to at least maintain and possibly reduce in some situations um, administration times from the WIPC-3, while at the same time allowing us to include more content such as working memory and inhibition. Also, the start points and discontinue rules were evaluated in order for us to cut down on the actual administration time, at the same time maintaining the strong reliability of the test. So the number of items to administer will be reduced by start and discontinue points that are made more effective. The issue of simplified instructions both increases the developmental appropriateness, as I mentioned in a previous slide, but it also increases the user friendliness of the test. And this is done through reducing the verbosity level and the vocabulary level on the WIPC-4, as well as helping to demonstrate, practice, and teach tasks. With regard to the plastic puzzle box, it was redesigned to be similar to the box for blocks. As well, a separate box was established to hold the cards and the bingo dauber. Also, we're planning a series of online post-publication trainings to address some of the major changes to the WIPSI, such as the new subtests and the new index scores. Finally, when taken all together, the entire test kit is fairly large and heavy. So to increase the portability of the test, there may be duplicated subtests in multiple books. So for example, if you need the STEM book for a certain age range, you don't need to carry multiple test books around, just the age range you need. The final revision goal refers to improving the test's psychometric properties, uh, including the normative data for the test. Now, the floors and ceilings were improved for the WIPC-4, and as we know, for tests for young children, floors and ceilings are, imp are important because of that varying and inconsistent level of development. Also, a good measure gives consistent difficulty gradients of 90% pass rate on down. On the WIPC-4, the item difficulty gradients were improved to fill holes in certain ages and to maintain a consistent difficulty gradient. Also, as you can see here, overlap with the WISC-4 was reduced significantly. Finally, as is done during every research phase, item bias is reviewed 
using an iterative psychometric analysis and qualitative expert reviews. Thanks for listening today to our short presentation on the new WIPC4 revision goals. 